All right. Coach Roberts, first things first. Man, you look you look very studious with the glasses on. I must say that. You look, you look pretty good. I'm doing my best. Okay, How are you, Zeb? I'm good. I just wanted to I wanted to call and congratulate you on your um I, I don't want to say this. I know I'm probably gonna get some blowback for this, but your your world championship with an asterisk next to it. I I, I said it. I, I said it. I said it. You know what? We'll take that. We'll, I would. We'll, I, <laughs> yes. It's okay. If the tribe would have won, I'd have taken it. Yeah. What a crazy year. And what, uh, how great to just be able to watch sports and have some semblance of, you know, normalcy. And yeah, 60 game season. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and I, I can say this, uh, I think, without being biased because cause my team won. Um, but, man, all those guys, all those guys on all the teams and stuff had maybe more challenges, different, different than the long grind, dog days of summer, all that, the 162 games, but different challenges. Man, being isolated, being in a so-called bubble, a hotel, the protocols, all that, having to go through an extra uh, uh, series in the playoffs, yeah, the normal, it was four, it was another four round. round. It was four, four rounds. Yeah. Yeah, four, four, four rounds. You know, so for the Dodgers, they played a, uh, a pretty good uh, Milwaukee team. And then, you know, and, and the, the three game series for all the teams are really scary to me as a fan. Yeah. I mean, you, you've seen baseball enough. Anything can happen in a three-game series. Yes. Um, I mean, you could, you, you, you could have run the gauntlet during the year and been the absolute best team and lose a three-game series. Well, totally. You know? Yeah, I think you get your better team the, the longer The longer it increases, you know, it goes to five, it goes to seven. Usually, on average, the better team wins. Not always, but usually. Uh, three-game, though, crazy. Brewers, Padres, a scary Padres team. I mean, with such with, young uh, talent, Tatis, oh uh, Fernando Tatis and and Machado, and just yeah. scary guys, man. Yeah. And then and then the Braves, that epic series with the Braves, down three one, and it was almost like, uh, you know, it was almost it was almost like Schilling, I believe, said against the Yankees that year when it was 3-0. He said, don't let us win one. They got they got, they got in at 3-2. They tied it up 3-3. Game, game seven. Went to the series. Went to the fall classic. Asterisk. It's okay, man. We're feeling good this morning. Yeah, I guess LA's championship town. Not only yeah, – no. and, 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 I, and I got a preface. My, I got a preface. My wife says, there is no we. It's not we, Kevin. You've never played for the Dodgers. You don't know anyone on the Dodgers. You're not employed by the Dodgers. You've never been in the organization. You've never lived in L.A., let alone California. There is no we. Because early in the season, I was like, we got to get going. We got to get these bats going, man. What? She's like, it's not we. It's they. I say it's right. we, man. She's right. I've been following them since 1979. If I want to say it's we – then it's we. <laughs> I love it. Hey, hey, so congratulations. Congratulations on that. Uh, good for you guys. I mean, we didn't get the job done. You know, we drew. I think, you know, whatever, right? We can do if, if uh, the ifs and the buts about the tribe. But, you know, you get the Yankees right out of the gate. Obviously, it's not good for us. Not, not the best matchup. And then it's just how it it's goes. A, but, it's a wonderful game, though, you know. Great I game. Mean, and, great and, and, game. As much as I'm into wrestling, it's so different than wrestling. But it's it's a it's a wonderful game to be a fan of. And, really, and, and you know the managing, and the, I mean and just the high prep situation. It's it's a, it's a great game. It really is. Yeah, you know I think it was Kenny Monday. Uh, he just tweeted out how how much he loves it, and then and then it was like the World Series, right? The World Series. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was Kenny Monday. I can't remember if it was him or not, but somebody tweeted it out, and I got so excited that I was like, "Oh man, you know, if he if he's a fan of it, right?" Um, yeah, because you know that guy has some emotion. You know that guy has some competitive fire. I mean, 
you know, it, it, it is. It's, it's, really a, it's really a great game and the drama. I think the series of it adds something to it. You know, it's not yeah. a one-off. It's not a one game. You get, you know, you, you get to follow the, like the people and the managers and the decisions. And of course the announcers, you know, and that's their job. They have analytics on everything. They have, uh, the you know, the big thing. The numbers are unreal. The numbers are unreal. Well, the thing that'll, Yeah. The thing that'll go down last night, you know, is taking Snell out of the game, and then and and that and and people will be talking about that. They were talking about uh, Grady Little leaving. Uh, what was it, Pedro in twenty years ago? Too long, and it cost him his job. And you you know, analytics, all that. I was a coach a long time. You know, sometimes you got to go with your gut. Yeah, no, and I I agree with that. And live with it. Yeah, and here's what Dan Dan rather. Kenny Monday, he quoted Dan Rather, right? And he said, Dan Rather said, baseball is just beautiful and surprised. So it's and surprising, tense, and comforting. So baseball is just beautiful and surprising, tense, and comforting. It's unlike anything else I have ever seen, and I love it. And Kenny Monday said, especially the World Series. And how that game, and I know you guys came out on the wrong end of it, right? With the two errors in one play and the swipe tag, and he missed the ball. But – it didn't cost you the series. It's the crazy thing. that didn't No, it didn't. Uh, it didn't. But it's one of those things. Like, you you know, I can remember where I was, what room I was in when Kirk Gibson hit that home run in 88. And much like that, when he was, I can when he was remember. Just bumping the whole. I will never, I'll never forget that game. The one, the one that we blew the other night as I'm sitting in a hotel room watching, eating hot Cheetos, watching the game in a hotel room with my daughter in Logan, Utah, out at the Western States, you know, preseason tournament. And, oh, my God, how does that happen? How, like, and, and I've heard smart people say before, if you watch baseball enough, chances are – you will see something that you've never seen before. You could watch baseball for another 20 years and never see that play again. Two I air, couldn't agree with you. One inning. Couldn't agree with you more. One, one play. I couldn't unreal. agree with you more. Uh, I, I mean, unreal. Can we shift gears? I yes. love baseball. I love baseball. I'm glad I, I kind of tried to reel it in by bringing Kenny Monday into it. But – we got to talk wrestling. I mean, I love talking everything else with you, right? I mean, we're not even going to get into politics. That's 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 a whole nother that's a whole nother uh, fifty-five gallon drum of worms, right? We're trying to keep one hundred percent of the viewers you have today, whether that's <laughs> two or a million. We're trying to keep all of them, not eliminate fifty percent of them. Correct. So here's the deal. Um, I was out there this summer, and I actually got the 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 pleasure of looking at some properties with you right? All around in the, the tri-state area you guys live, in, right? Um, and it's just a beautiful area where you live, Kevin. The Rocky Mountains, you're right? The, the gateway to the Rocky Mountains, right? Um, you're not too far from British Columbia. It, it's just, it's really beautiful where you live. And you know, I love it out there. I love coming out there, but you've been kicking around the idea of, of starting your own club. And, you know, you finally started to look at properties and take it a little more seriously. Where are you at right now with starting your own club? Well, so really, I'm not starting a club um, per se, but I, you, you know, um, although, you know, this year, just things may change a little bit with like, you know, I, I bought a facility just like, I mean, to get to the short of it. And it's going to be, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a place to train. Um, but I'm not right now per se starting a club where I'm going three, four or five nights a week and stuff. We're going to have year round wrestling and stuff, but we do a lot of weekends. We're going to do like weekend camps. We're going to do winter camps. We're going to do spring break camps. We're going to do summer camps. And then, you know, obviously this year where we're at, um, with a lot of schools, not probably opening their doors for who knows how long, I mean, <laughs> you know, to outside groups or anything, 
it may be a little bit more of a, you know, weekly like place to practice or whatever, but you know, I'm very comfortable. I got a great club up here. I'm a part of with the Inland Northwest training center. I've been there with Brian Owen now for two years and we got great people there. And so like I, I, my, my kids wrestle there. My kids represent the club. I got three of them in the sport of wrestling, you know, from Drew down to my, like, that's, you know, 18 now down to my younger ones. And so Brian and I are good friends. We're like, I, I'll, I'll keep doing that. But I did buy a piece of property a little bit out in the country that um, I'm going to start having year round like camps. Some of them will be big beginner camps. Some of them will be like hammer camps where it's a very s small specific group, iron, sharp and iron, so to speak, you know, throw all the cliches in there you want, but we'll have high level wrestling. And um, that's kind of where we're at right now. So you're not, creating a club to compete with Brian's club. No, 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 no. I will still, no, I'll, I'll still coach that's, for the club. No, right? that's good that you're like, you tell me those things. Cause I, I don't know that, you know? The yeah, no, I still got all the jackets, the hats, the gear. My daughter wrestled for Inland Northwest last weekend in Utah. Um, Roberts does not have a, a, a wrestling club. You will not see any Roberts train shirts or those. I don't like those. Uh, like you, you won't see any of that nonsense. But we have a place where we will load it up with the artillery and let the guys bang and teach them high-level wrestling. And, um, yeah, man, they get to stay, you know, they, they get to be out in the woods and experience that a little bit. And But at the same time, it's not too far from society. You, you know, I, I, you're fine, it finds like – you find a place where you're like, man, I, I can see myself training athletes here. But you don't you're – you're off the beaten path a little bit. Um, they're going to be out in the country but they're going to be close within half hour of an airport, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Travel like pretty easily to your, to your camp for me to, uh, you know, from Ohio, I usually have to connect in like Minneapolis, St. Paul or Denver to get out to Spokane, to get to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where you guys are. And, and um, Idaho, Northern Idaho, Eastern Washington and Western Montana, right? That would be the tri-state region I'm talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bitterroot Mountains, Rocky Mountain, you know, range. You guys are right there. And everybody, Snake, yeah, Snake, Snake, Hell's River. Canyon, yeah. Clearwater. I mean. Lake Ponderay is not far from you guys. Sandpoint, it's all right there. Missoula, what, how far is Missoula, Montana? Eh, 168 miles, I think. So out there, you can drive Missoula in under, two, under, under two and a half hours, right? Yeah, you can get you. I mean, yeah, you can you can get there. You can get there in uh, probably two and a half hours, you know, if you don't have a lot of snow and ice on the pass. Sure. Yeah. So <laughs> look out fast is no joke. <laughs> yeah. Look out 4th of July. Oh, I mean, God. but beautiful country, man. Yeah, no and doubt. That, and that's why we that's why we like it, you know. I, and you know why that's why I love coming out there. Um, your brother in laws, they're a national treasure, by the way. <laughs> those guys they're, they're, something they're a riot man jeff almost died a couple weeks ago I on a hunting him. what is jeff doing well he, you know everybody wants to be great you know whatever you're doing so he wants to be the world's best hunter when he's out in the middle of nowhere and you know get an elk and then take where they're at and what the daylight is and the ravine it's in and all that you know take 12 hours to get it out of there he said I haven't been that dehydrated since I was wrestling in high school, man. I, th I, I almost died. I would love to hear his brother's commentary on that. Well, you know. <laughs> oh, you know, that's great. You know, that's really cool too, that um, you have really good coaches. Like your brother-in-law is one of the top coaches in the state of Idaho. He's the head coach at Coeur d'Alene High, Jeff Moffat. Like <laughs> he almost tries to kill himself packing elk out of a Canyon. Right. Um, but you got, you got, family you got guys like that that are around your son he's one of the top 145 152s in the country middleweights in the country right iron man placer fart multi-time fargo placer you've already got people it's already in place it's not you're gonna have to bring in all these outside people you know you're a two-time d1 all-american you're a d1 head coach for 20 plus years i mean there's a lot of experience out there kevin you guys got a lot of knowledge base when it comes to wrestling you know how to train athletes I watched you in the 2012 uh, Olympic trial finals in Iowa city. And one of the greatest three match series ever it didn't go your way. Right. But one of the greatest three match series ever, right. A great three match series. Would you agree? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I think you're talking to with 
about Nick Simmons yeah. and, and Hayeswinkle. But, I mean, remember that morning the match with Cejudo. How about one of the greatest in-person matches I've ever seen? Pro- pro- probably one of the best action-packed freestyle matches I've seen, certainly of this era. I mean, you got to remember, hey, my friend. Hi. What's going on, dude? You've been watching out for pterodactyls? <laughs> ah! Hey, I mean, remember the era that was coming at, out of with yeah. the period, the periods era and the, the best out of three and all that and the, and the ball grab and this, I mean, and that. And not to be too critical, but that was not in many ways a very good era of wrestling. You I, watch was, that and you go back and you watch – I mean, it's, it, it was a lost era in a lot of ways. There were so many matches that could have been such ones for the ages that were, you know, like the rules just kind of changed things up the way guys wrestled and almost like very strategic and, and which you got to at that level, but ball grab, afraid to make ball a, a mistake. Yeah, hey, I'm going to get the ball. I'm going to get the ball and I'm going to just run the guy out of bounds because I'm going to start with his leg in the air. Yeah. And you look back to the 80s, the 90s, man, in wrestling, my God, my, my, the, the, the list of the videos I got over here that I could watch and break down with the, these guys. Man, the early 2000s, that first part, we didn't see enough of that. Kevin, but that match, we did. That match, that was also two threes ended a period. Two feet to backs ended a period, didn't they? Yes, two threes ended a period. A person could lose a period. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, point, yeah. They could lose a period and win the period. Yeah, I just, I, you know, I, I don't Six know. Point tech uh, ball. Hold on, hold on. How about somebody could tech somebody 6 0, lose 1 0. Hey, lose 1 1 1 1. There you go. Right? Like they, a guy they, could text cumulative somebody. score, cumulative score eight to two, and I lost. Yeah. Go explain that. Go explain that to someone and try to get them in the sport that doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Hey, I lost the period six nothing, and then I uh, won one zero one zero. I scored two points. That guy scored a total of six, but I won the match. No, I mean, hey, hey, go, we we were we were talking baseball. So go go explain how that. Remember that eleven spot the Dodgers put up in that one game so then take take of those innings and, and make them and a bunch of them were you know one 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 zero yeah. the other way and imagine if the score was like 15 to six at the end of nine innings but you lost <laughs> I mean it's mind-boggling yeah. it's 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 yeah. bizarre it kind of it's almost it would almost believe be more believable if they decided to do that in 2020 instead of back when they did it just because how bizarre 2020 I mean that would almost be that like oh oh yeah oh okay well it's 2020 man there's a lot of moronic stuff going on like okay I just watched Thomas <laughs> cloud his head we're talking oh man this little guy he's something else little Tom just had a birthday right Little Tom just had a birthday two days ago, three days yeah. ago. Yeah, he's good now, though. Uh, Kevin, real quick, what can we expect to see at the, the – It's why, why is it the dungeon, and what can we accept to, expect to see at the dungeon? Well, you're going to probably come out and visit the dungeon at some point, are you not? Well, I mean, come on. I think it's just assumed. So, yeah, you know, I mean – it kind of depends on the camp and stuff like that. So we had one camp and, um, you know, and we're, and right now we're getting ready for another one coming in a couple of weeks, but, um, you know, like some of them will have a lot of wrestling at, you know, some of them will have a lot of wrestling, but, you know, I do believe you, you, um, you, you go every day, you you teach something. I mean, we're going to teach something, you know, every day. And even if it's a, even if it's a, even if it's a day where it's more set on, you know, a lot of hard wrestling, a lot of combat or something in those sessions, um, we're still going to do everyday drills, like where we, we work on stuff, you know, just fundamentals and where we work on position and, and instill, instill some, some of the philosophy and, and the stuff that we're trying to do. But, you know, this is a thing with, um, 
you know, big ideas. And so like my hope is that, you know, obviously we will have a lot of local people throughout some of these camps, especially during the school year, you know, our, our home base will still be the Northwest and stuff. But when we get into the summertime, um, I really envision, and I think it will happen and, and, and working collaboratively with some of the people that, that I'm, you know, that I'm close with or have developed relationships with over the years of bringing some of their kids in, whether it's from Ohio, Illinois, California, Michigan. Um, and I do think we will have camps where we have, you know, like, uh, you know, 20 hammers, so to speak, that are there and that's there, they're there and that's about it at that certain time. And where it's, you know, really for some of those high level guys that want to get, you know, some great coaching um, and great partners, you know, surround yourself with like-minded and, and high energy and high um, people with high goals. And so I do think we'll have that. I think we will have people flying across the country to come spend a week with us, you know, or what it, what, whatever it may be. You know, you have such strong relationships and ties with, you know, obviously you worked the J-Rob camp system for many years, right? Uh, obviously, uh, Jimmy Z's camps at Oregon State that you guys had were, were dynamite camps. I love coming to them, right? Those were great camps. Um, and then there's these other systems, you know, Drew's come out here from Burnett Trained, right? Um, you have other people that you deal with that are Jordan people, right? Then you got the Perlers, and then you've got – Izzy's got camps, right? Izzy was, you coached Izzy in junior college. Yep. Coach Izzy out of Chicago, right? I mean, there's all these different camp systems and they're everywhere. And how do you carve out your own niche and your own way of doing it? And, and what's going to be unique to, to Robert's wrestling, right? What, what's, what's Robert's wrestling, the man on fire? What is the dungeon going to offer differently than those, those other places I mentioned? Well, you know, I mean, some people are going to have to take my word for it until they get here, but you've been around me enough. And number one is, I think, energy and passion. I mean, I think there, there's not a lot of people that'll come and work as hard every day on a consistent basis from session to session, whether I'm working with beginning level kids or guys that are back on break from college. Um you know, it's a labor of love. I love it. I go there every day. I go, I go to practice every day. And, and, and so, you know, um, I mean, the first thing I think about in the morning is wrestling. And, and it's one of those last things I think about at night is like how, you know, um, you know, what are the drills? What, what did we see at practice today? How do we get this guy in better position? How do we get this guy to transition? He's not getting it off his takedowns in, into, you know, into his top wrestling. Um, you know, why he, why, and just how do we, get, how do we get better? He's not getting the weight off his hands when he's on bottom. Why can't he change over? We got to get better at these things. So like, you know, every day we're going to come and we're going to work hard at wrestling. And I just think when you have passion and energy um, and a zest for something, I think it's contagious. Um, I don't know if you'll see anything that you don't see um, anywhere else, but um I can, I can tell you, like, we'll work hard with the kids and we'll, you know, surround ourselves with, like, people the same. You know, the people, like, working with me and for me and stuff like that will we'll be like that. And, um, you know, it's just something that consumes me. I mean, you know, more than the Dodgers. My family and wrestling. I mean, that's, that's really that's, – that's about it. It's pretty simple. Not being beholden to a facility, right? You were beholden to Eastern Washington, right? We, we, you had the camp last 2019, uh, yeah, July 2019, yeah. you had the camp. Ashnault came out, uh, the Mongoose came out, Dustin Schlater. And, and, yeah, you right, know, right. You're going to continue to bring people in like that, I'm sure, from what I know of you. But um, not being tied to a facility and now having your own private facility, how excited are you about that, Kevin? It's great, man. It's the best of, you know, and it, and it, and it took some, you know, it took some things to fall in place to make it happen. And, and obviously some risk out there investing and, and that, but you know, it's, it's the best. I, I'm, I'm striving to have the best of both worlds. So we're going to work, we're going to work really hard. We're going to grind really hard. There's going to be year, uh, certain times of the year when we're doing nothing but working and um, and then, and then the trade-off is going to be, 
when my own kids are, are, are getting to wrestle or gymnastics or whatever it is, hey, guess what? There's no camp that weekend. Kids wrestling in the Midlands. Yeah, we were going to have a winter break camp, but, you know, I, I'm going to watch that instead. I'm going to go to, you know, Iowa City that weekend to watch my boy, you know, wrestle Minnesota and against Iowa or, or, or things like that as an example. So, you know, we will work and we'll work hard like when we're there, but it really allows me some flexibility to, you know, follow my own kids and, and um, things like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking to have my own facility, property, improve it as I go along. I mean, I got a million and one ideas and maybe I'll do three of them, but, you know, it's just, you, you look at the property, the way it's set up, what you could build here, what you could build there, improvements on the property, where you could set things. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a challenge. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a new phase. I'm very excited about it. If people want to start to see things you schedule and they want to see what's going on and what your whole schedule is, and I know you haven't released your summer schedule for next year yet, but they want to see the, the, the Christmas break schedule. They want to see what's going on in springtime. They want to see the weekly schedule. Where can they find all your information? How can people get in touch with you, Coach Roberts? The best way is Instagram at Roberts Wrestling. I have a website, robertswrestling.com. But, hey, do you know anybody that's good at, at, at doing websites? I'm not very good. So that stuff usually comes out after I can get someone to help me do that on the website. Instagram and Twitter, man. Roberts Wrestling on Instagram. Um, I... You know, I put all my stuff on there. Every time something comes up, I put it on there. Here's the next camp. You know, there's going to probably be two before um, the end of the calendar year. And then, you know, we'll be working on the next things coming and, and coming after that and looking forward to the spring and the summer. And um, so really exciting. And I imagine you may make a trip to the dungeon at some point. I, I'm just, I'm just telling you, you got to be careful when you, when you get ready to go to the dungeon, make sure you have your bases covered. Make sure you've set Sarah and the kids up with good insurance policy and all that should something very, very nasty happen, Seb, when you come to the dungeon. Oh man, you're ridiculous. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty fun. So you're going to be doing a lot less traveling as far as like people are going to have to come to you if they want. That might be the greatest part of all, of all, right? I mean, you, when you, when you, you know, when you make a living and you, and you go and you, you know, you do camps in 36 States or something like that, maybe, maybe 33, something like that. And then, and, and there, you know, there's a nice part of it. You get to, you get to see some places and stuff like that, but really, man, you're working. And when you're working two and three session a days, especially the older you get, sometimes you just want to go into the hotel and you don't want to, and you're, you're gone. You're gone. You're away from, you know, you're away from your own family. And, and, and this is, this is cool. This is far enough away that I don't have a hundred kids running around my backyard and stuff like that um and and in the neighborhood and so we have some space so we're we're out in the sticks just a little bit but i can be home if my kid has a little league baseball game i can go there and i spend less time in airports and hotels and more close enough closer to the uh inland northwest where we like it out here you know all right coach i love it I, i'll be out probably sooner than later you got anything else for me? Anything, any, any other, any other good ones for me? Any good stories? Oh my, oh God, man, alive stories. Gee, many Christmas. Like, where do we start? Where do we end? How much time you got? I mean, I don't I got to go take my kids hiking or I would stay here and talk to you. There is always stories. Oh my God. You, oh, I, I got a couple. I got a couple. We'll save for next time. I got a couple off of live wire or whatever this is the 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 zoom the zoom the zoom <laughs> yeah I got, hey uh the the live the, the the live tv or zoom whatever you okay i got a few that are better off of that that, okay. that are 
Oh, my God. Oh, all right, boy. hey, real quick, I'm going to cut this recording. Let's talk <laughs> afterwards. I appreciate your time, man, all right? Hey, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, when's the next camp, by the way? November 13th through the 15th. Fall, isn't it? Fall. All right. Nine coach. days sold out. Coach, thanks for the time. We're, we're, not, we're, we're, we're not up to, uh, you know, I, I mean, we're, we're not up to out to selling out like Garth Brooks or Brad Paisley, like in, in uh, quite that yet. But, hey, you know, nine days, it's pretty good, man. We're not on the radio yet. We're like, we're not, our, the commercials aren't on the radio. So that's all social media, man. Awesome, Coach. Thanks for the time.